Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable one-year-old little boy. So for dinner tonight, we are having grilled pork chops and baked beans. Howard is outside grilling our pork chops, and I thought I would show you how I make my baked beans. So in my skillet, I have five slices of bacon and some green bell pepper, and I just cook them down. And then I am just going to add in my baked beans. And I've got that all combined. To it, I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. You can add whatever barbecue sauce you like. I happen to like this one because it is thick and spicy. I used to add brown sugar to my baked beans and mustard, but sometimes less is more. And when I stopped adding those ingredients, I really couldn't tell that they were missing, so I just stopped using them. So I'm just putting in some barbecue sauce, and you'll put as much as you want. If I had to guess, that's probably a half a cup of barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna get this all stirred up. And then what you're going to do next is to pour your baked beans into a casserole dish. I'm using a nine by nine casserole dish. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. The way that I grew up in my family, we always baked our baked beans. I know that some people eat them off of the stove top just like this, but I always, you know, ate them baked. So I'm gonna pour them into a pan and then I'm going to let these cook on 350 for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes until they get all nice and bubbly and I'll be back. So here are the baked beans. I baked them for about 25 minutes and the pork chops. And this is what um, I use to season the pork chops. I got this from Trader Joe's and first time trying it. Let me turn it around so you can see what's in there. Brown sugar, smoked paprika. So the smoked paprika is pretty strong. Uh, I'm not a huge paprika fan, so it just it's just okay to me. Howard likes it, he really likes paprika. And the barbecue sauce is this uh, Rufus Teague, honey sweet. And then I made some broccoli slaw, also from uh, Trader Joe's. And here's what that bag looks like. And I just sauteed it in olive oil and then added garlic salt to it. Broccoli, broccoli slaw is just the stalk of the broccoli that's been shredded and of course there's carrots in there. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, Howard went to a local Caribbean restaurant. For those of you that don't know, Howard is from Jamaica and he likes this type of food and he made sure to tell me it is not actually a Jamaican restaurant, it is Caribbean. So he got the oxtail plate and underneath the oxtail, um, there are, uh, those are rice and peas and then he got cabbage on the side. And then I got rice and peas, cabbage, but I am trying brown stewed chicken, which is new for me, I've never tried it. Normally when we eat here, um, I get the jerk chicken, but I wanted to try something different today. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I'm trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. It is taco pizza. I found it in an old cookbook that I bought. Um, and it was created by home ec teachers. So in my skillet, I've got one pound of lean ground beef and some onions. I've cooked them until they were done. And in the meantime, I also par baked this thin crust Pillsbury pie crust, not pie crust, pizza crust. And you see it right over here. So that is ready to go. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce to the meat. And I'm going to add in my taco seasoning. So I happen to love Trader Joe's. One packet seasons one pound of ground beef. So I just took half out and it looks like this. Just gonna sprinkle this in. So the recipe also calls for olives and Howard and I, neither one of us really care for olives that much. So I left 
them out. And I'll make sure to link, well not actually link, I'll write up the recipe and uh, I'll put it in the description box so that you guys can have it. So I'm just stirring this up and I'm going to add it to the pizza crust. And then I'm going to top it with, it says a cup of cheddar cheese. I have more than a cup because we like cheese. So I'm just gonna top it and then I'm gonna bake it until it's nice and golden brown. So here is the taco pizza. I ended up baking it for I think 13 minutes. You can see it got a little dark around the edges. And normally I use parchment paper. I didn't today, but I would definitely suggest that you use some parchment paper because it did stick to the bottom of my pan, even though it is nonstick. So this is what it looks like. And then this is Howard's plate. He dressed his up. The recipe suggests adding um, lettuce, sour cream, salsa, um, avocado. So he went all in. He likes lots of toppings. And then I just kept mine plain. I'm not big into toppings like that. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight. Oh, and it's good. I forgot to mention that. It is tasty. I would definitely make it again. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I am trying out a new recipe for dinner tonight. It is a crock pot pepper steak. And I actually found this um, cookbook at the Dollar Tree. This is what it looks like. And um, I will hold it here so you all can screenshot it because honestly, I doubt that I'm gonna type all of this up. So I'll just hold it there so you can screenshot it. And let me show you what I've done so far. So in my crock pot, I have um, flank steak, a pound and a half of planks, uh, flank steak. The recipe called for two pounds of sirloin, but this is what I had on hand. Um, I coated my flank steak in cornstarch, and then I browned it in the pan, and then I added some garlic powder right on top. Now the instructions don't call for you to um, coat the um, beef in cornstarch, but I did because I tried another crock pot recipe a while back ago and I did that and the meat turned out really tender. So I didn't add that additional one tablespoon that you see right there because I just added it to the beef and browned it. And then in this cup I have, or measuring cup, I have bouillon, um, some water, I also have soy sauce and sugar. The recipe called for additional salt and I did not add that. And I actually did not have bouillon, I had this. Better than bouillon, sauteed onion. Um, I figured it would work just fine. And then in this bowl, I have red and green bell pepper, onion, an onion and fresh mushrooms. So I'm just gonna add everything to the crock pot and it says to cook on um, low for six to eight hours or on high and I'm a low person so I'm gonna cook this on low for eight hours and I'll be back hey so it's been about seven hours and I just tasted this and it is super bland not a lot of flavor at all Howard tasted it he thought the same thing it's bland the meat is tender but you can see that there is not a lot of liquid in here so maybe I should have added the cornstarch. So I'm gonna make a, a cornstarch slurry. And then I've got to doctor this up a little bit. I think I'm gonna add this to the crock pot and um, let it cook on high. See if that can add some more flavor to it. So I'll be back. Okay, so here is the pepper steak and it tastes decent, it's okay. Would I be in a hurry to make it again? No, because I had to doctor it up in order for it to taste decent. I'll probably look for another recipe, but I'm serving it over jasmine rice, and then I also stir fried some fresh broccoli in olive oil, and then I used this to season the broccoli with. It is so good. And let me just show you the pepper steak in the crock pot. So here it is. We've got plenty for leftovers. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time.
Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I decided to go with breakfast for dinner. We are having biscuits and gravy. I really just didn't feel like cooking anything tonight. And I had some half and half in my fridge that I needed to use up. So biscuits and gravy it is. I do have a video on our channel, how I make my sausage gravy. It is so easy to make. It's foolproof, I promise. I'll make sure to link it in the description box so you guys can check it out. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time.